Hey guys, and welcome to my Factorio nuclear power tutorial. This is going to be the first tutorial for 015, many more to come after this. But I figured we would start with nuclear here because this is probably one of the most anticipated features uh, with the 015 update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process, essentially from the very start point of, of the process, of the very beginning, all the way through till the end point where you can actually start generating power with it. And then I'm also going to go over some numbers and ratios uh, for building setups. You can use those yourself to build any setup you like because, of course, you know, they carry through. And uh, with those numbers, you know, you can harness those to just kind of build uh, whatever type of setups you want. So this may seem somewhat complicated uh, at first glance on the outside, but once you understand the concept, and I will just explain it in a very broad sense here in a minute to try to just get, get a point across of how generally it works. Uh, once you understand that, it's fairly straightforward uh, with a few little nuances. So let's start at the beginning here. You start with your uranium ore. This is a new ore in 015 and it generates like anything else a little bit more rare than other ores, but you should definitely still find some. So you'll notice there's a super cool new miner graphic here. Now to clarify guys, this is not a new miner. This is just an electric miner, but it changes to this really awesome graphic when you put it on uranium. And just for anyone wondering, if you have a split resource patch, so like if uh, a good example maybe would be up here, so this uranium is kind of right by the stone. If you have a drill overlapping on both, it'll take this graphic. Uh, pretty much if a drill is touching uranium at all, it'll take this graphic and also have different requirements, which we can go into now. So to, to mine uranium, you actually need to input sulfuric acid now, which is pretty interesting. It's a adds a different kind of logistic challenge to the whole process, but I think it's it's pretty cool. So you input your uranium into the uh, input here with the blue arrows. You can see there's three different inputs, and then where the yellow arrows are, that's where you output your uranium. And one cool thing is this will flow through miners, right? So you notice all these miners are connected. I'm not running pipe, like snaking all the way through. As long as you hit one miner with it and all your miners are connected, like blue arrow to blue arrow like this, uh, it'll all connect, right? So I could put like another one here and such, and this guy will work because it's flowing through. So that, that makes it a lot easier logistically. So you mine this stuff, right? It takes 10 sulfuric acid per ore. You can see down there uh, requires. So, or 10 sulfuric acid per 10 ore, sorry. So essentially one sulfuric acid per ore is what it takes. Now, let's go ahead and move on down. So you mine your uranium, and the next step here is to take a centrifuge, which is a cool new building, which looks absolutely amazing, especially at night. It glows in the dark, which is super cool. I'm going to turn off always day so it gets night and we can look at this. But you take your centrifuge now, and when you open it up, you have a couple options for processes. It depends on your tech, obviously. If we hop into the tech window here, uh, there are several different levels of tech for this. So your first one is going to just be nuclear power, which is just red, green, blue. And this unlocks all your basic things that you need to actually make your nuclear uh, power generation. But then after that, you have some other things, some other processes, which I'll go over in a minute. So if you only have this unlocked, you'll only have one option, which will be this option here, your uranium processing. And then these two are unlocked through further, further tech, right? So if we select this guy. This is what we have over here. What this does is this takes in uranium ore and it outputs uh, two byproducts. Uh, one of them is a much, much lower chance, though, to get than the other, which I'll get into in just a second. So you select that. This is a process that takes 10 uranium ore in 10 seconds, and it outputs uranium-235, which is this bright green stuff, and uranium-238, which is this dark green stuff. Now, the ratio or the chance to get these is vastly different um, in, in relation to each other. So you have a 0 0.007 chance per process to get U-235, okay? So a very, very minimal chance per process to get this, right? This thing's been running, uh, you know, I mean, we get some of this each time. This thing's been running a long time. You can see the difference, 264 U-238 compared to the two uh, U-235, right? So you have a very, very minimal chance to get this. And kind of to give you an idea here, in order to get about 40 of this U-235, 
and credit to the, this number I'm about to give you, uh, I want to give to Madzuri. I'm sure other people figured it out, but he's uh, the one who first mentioned it to me. Uh, in order to get 40 of this U-235, you have to process on an average 57,000 uranium ore. So you have to send essentially 57,000 uranium ore through this process to actually get 40 of this. And why I'm using 40 as kind of a benchmark here is because as we move on to a next process, uh, this is where you can use that 40 to actually get more of it. Okay, so very minimal chance to do this. I would suggest getting your uranium mining as quickly as you possibly can so this can start, you know, building up or, or just have a ton of these as well. So that takes care of that. And you can see at night, all this stuff is glowing. It looks super, super cool. But uh, for video purposes, I'm going to turn it back to day. So if we move on to this process, this is the Coverex enrichment process. And this is how you can actually get uh, larger amounts of the U-235, right? So you input 40. And remember, that's, that's why I'm using 40 as a benchmark. Because I would actually suggest unlocking this and starting this process before you use your 235 to start nuclear power because otherwise you're just going to kind of drive yourself into a hole because you won't have enough of this. So once you get 40, you go over here and you take 40 of that and 5 of the 238, 50 second process, and you get 41 back, so kind of an excess of 1, a benefit of 1, and 2 of the 238 back. Okay, so essentially cutting out all the intermediate stuff in the grand scheme of things here, you get 1. 235 in exchange for 3, 238, right? Because you're inputting 40 and 5 and you're getting back 41 and 2, right? So you have a loss of essentially 3 uh, pieces of 238, but a gain of 1, 235. I hope that makes sense. So once you start this, right? And of course, remember that this stuff is much more uh, abundant in this process. So it's okay to be, you know, using 3 of it to turn into one of the expensive part. Uh, once you get this, then you can kind of start this snowballing on itself, right? Because, you know, you get an extra one back, so then you could send this, 40 of this, into another one, and you still have one left over, and then you get another extra one from the next process, so on and so forth. So that's why I suggest starting this um, once you get 40 of your U-235 before you even use it for nuclear stuff, uh, because otherwise you're going to have some problems. So there's that. Now what do you do? with this 235. Well, this is what you use to create your fuel cells. It takes one 235 and 19 238, and you get 10 uranium fuel cells from this process, okay? Now you take these fuel cells and you stick them into a nuclear reactor. And this is its fuel, right? Now a couple notes here. First of all, and, and these are very important because otherwise you may end up just burning through your fuel without realizing it. These reactors burn fuel all the time, regardless of if they're working, regardless of if they're actually doing anything to generate power. If there's fuel on this thing, it's using it, okay? So you want to make sure there's some smart controllers people are making, uh, which I'll probably do a video on in the future once, you know, some solid builds are done that will, like, pull fuel, like, only put fuel in when this needs to generate power. Because if you just stick fuel in here, this will just use up the fuel, regardless of if it's doing anything. And the rate at which it uses fuel is one fuel cell every 200 seconds, okay? And that's just a constant rate, just one every 200 seconds it uses up. And when it uses it up, it gives you a used up uranium fuel cell. Now we're gonna hop back here really quick just to cover this last process. You can take these used up ones, you can take five of them, process them, another 50 second process to get three of the 238 back, right? So then that's another option. You can either put that into this process, which actually works perfectly, right? Because, uh, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, it, you're, you're essentially using up three of it to get one of the other. Uh, or you can use it to make ammo and stuff. You can now make uranium ammo with this, uh, tank shells, explosive tank shells and stuff, and a atomic bomb, but this is very expensive. You notice it uses the 235, 30 of it. Um, but that's what you can do with that. Okay, so you take this, this uses it one every 200 seconds, burns it regardless of if it's doing anything. Okay, now into the actual power setups. So if this is confusing to you how this actually works, kind of the best way I like to look at it in a in a broad sense, right, is if you have a steam setup, right? I, I think most people understand how the steam setup works, right? You have a pump, 
which pumps water into the boiler, which now creates steam, and the steam goes into the steam engines and they create power, right? Essentially what's happening here is the same thing, except, and this may sound weird when I first explain it, but essentially this reactor, this nuclear reactor, is acting as the fuel that you would put into a boiler, okay? So, you know, a boiler, you feed with coal or wood or whatever it may be. In this case, your reactor is pretty much that fuel, and then your heat exchanges here are your boilers, essentially. Um, they're almost identical, just a different item, right? And it work a little bit differently because what this is doing, right? This is burning your fuel, and this guy creates heat. You can see there a temperature. This will create heat, which you can then output through these heat pipes, which there's 12 connections here all around it. Okay, so instead of the heat exchanger creating heat like a boiler does, um, this creates the heat, sends it through a heat pipe into the heat exchanger, which takes in water, you can see through these two output and inputs here, and outputs steam. Heat is steam, okay? So, a couple notes. This thing, max temperature it can get up to is 1,000 degrees. It, it won't go any higher than that. Okay, and you can see there it's kind of going up and down a little bit, fluctuating as we use it, and it creates more and stuff, but it's fairly steady at this point. Now, in terms of these guys, these heat exchangers, they will not start working until it hits 500 degrees, okay? So if you have a setup, if you've made a setup and these aren't working, don't panic, because it has to hit 500 degrees before it does anything. And once it does that, it takes that 500 degree heat and water, heats up the water, and outputs 500 degree steam. This is a max, te max temperature steam it will output, okay? So it won't output anything hotter than that. Uh, and I and coincidentally, or not, <laughs> I actually probably planned, uh, these turbines, which are essentially your steam engines in this case, uh, can use 500 degree steam. That's the max they can use, and that will be full efficiency for them, okay? Now, a couple other notes in terms of numbers and ratios, okay? One reactor, okay, one nuclear reactor will support four heat exchanges, okay? This thing essentially generates uh, 40 megawatts worth of heat. And each one of these consumes 40 me uh, 10 megawatts there, you can see on the right. So this will support exactly four heat exchanges. Now, of course, you could go less if you wanted. Uh, it would, you know, be a little bit of a waste, but you, you know, because this uses fuel no matter what at a constant rate. So this will support four by itself. Okay, and there's some other ways to get this to do more, which I'll explain in a few minutes uh, with a neighbor bonus. But this will support four of these, okay? Now, each one of these takes in about 103.4 water a second, okay? That's how much it consumes and outputs the equivalent amount of steam, 103.4 steam a second, okay? So in terms of how much water this needs, like from a pump, we go over here and we see our pump pumps 1,200 a second, okay? Now, all we need to do is just take 1,200 a second, and I'm going to bring a calculator over on screen here just to show you guys. Um, we take 1,200 a second, and we just divide it by the consumption of those. So 103.4, it's actually 0.448, so I guess we'll just do it fully to get the exact number. And this is 11.6, so one pump can essentially support 11.6 of these heat exchanges. Okay, so it would be a little less then three separate reactors worth right because that would be 12 heat exchanges since each one can support four. So that's how much one pump can support. Now I would suggest, and I'll show you in a build down lower, um, I would suggest rounding down for this due to fluid mechanics and flow rates and pipes. You're going to be better off probably rounding down for this just to like 11 rather than rounding up to 12 uh, because the fluid mechanics can get kind of wonky. And especially if you run a pipe a long distance, right, it reduces its flow. But anyway, moving on. So these guys, that's how much they intake, that's how much they output. Now, how many turbines can these support? Um, another fairly simple calculation. Again, these output 103.448 steam a second. These turbines take exactly 60 steam a second. You can see down there, fluid consumption, you know, X, in this case, 60 out of 60 a second, okay? So very simple. We just clear this and we take... 103.448 and divide it by 60. This can support 1.72. Each one of these can support 1.72 turbines each. Okay, so if you have four here, another very simple calculation, you just take this number, multiply it by four, 
and this can support 6.89 turbines. Now, in this case, guys, it's actually okay to round up for this because what's going to happen is you're just going to have one that doesn't work fully, as you'll see here. My last one is working almost completely, but not quite, and that's because I have seven, and this can only support 6.8, okay? But it's totally fine, right? Because, you know, this is better than having just six because then there's going to be wasted stuff. At least this way there's six and then essentially 0.8 of one working. Okay, and that's what we have here. And this is working complete. You can see their available performance are all max except this last one. And I'm using a cheaty energy source here just to draw power to show you. Um, so this setup here, a 147 will support, will produce exactly 40 megawatts. It fluctuates 39.9 to 40 but it stays within that point 0.1 range, right? And of course, you can make this much more compact, much better looking. This is just for demonstration and ratio purposes. So that's how that works. Now that we have the general math out of the way, we can go into kind of a bigger build. So what this is, is this is essentially maxing out the pump down here, right? So if you remember, the one pump can support like 11.8 or 11.6 boilers. So again, I've rounded down for the reasons I mentioned previously. So this is one pump, to 11 boilers and each one can support 1.2 turbines so I've just taken 11 multiplied it by uh, 1.72 and this is now I believe 19 we go ahead and take a blueprint this is the easiest way to measure 19 of these and you'll see again one of these is barely not working because it's actually 18 point something but it's okay to round up because we have one that's just barely not working okay and all these are connected, really. I, they can pass steam through each other, right? So I've just connected them all together. Um, I could actually have probably put these nine, nine on the end here, but it would be quite long, so I've just attached them at the bottom. And this setup will produce 110 megawatts worth, okay? Now, remember, one of these reactors can only support four of these dudes. So what I've done here is I've used the neighbor bonus, and now we'll get into this. This is where it gets pretty interesting. These reactors, right, guys? These reactors get a bonus per neighbor. And it's very important to clarify that by neighbor, I mean 100% touching like this, okay? Like one full side to one full side. It does not work to do something like this. If I fuel these, you'll see there's no neighbor bonus, okay? They have to be touching 100% on each side, okay? But these now get a neighbor bonus, 100% bonus per neighbor, okay? So this guy, you can see neighbor bonus down there, 100% plus itself obviously i mean this is one physical reactor and then it's getting a hundred percent bonus on top of that so this is essentially acting as two reactors as is this one right because it gets a bonus from this one this one gets a bonus from the top one okay so this is essentially acting as two reactors and then this one's also two reactors but another interesting thing to notice here is you may have seen that i do not actually have heat pipes running out of this one to anywhere I'm only pulling the heat pipes from this bottom one. And this is because your reactors can actually transfer heat to each other. Okay, now it would work completely fine. You know, if I wanted to pull a heat pipe off of here and bring it down and just have one coming off of each reactor, that's totally fine too. But if you don't, you can actually run these heat pipes off of just one reactor because this guy is passing the heat to this one in order for this one to be able to supply the needed heat for all of these heat exchanges, if that makes sense. Right, And these heat, heat pipes don't seem to have much of a drop-off over distance. Uh, over, like I would imagine, extremely long distances, it would be bad. But I have seen setups where people have run like eight of these, which I'll show a little demonstration of up top. People run like eight of these and just run a heat pipe off of one or two for like 120 heat exchanges and just let the others be there just to transfer heat to each other. So that is possible. Okay. Now, one, one very, very important note here, guys. There's some slight bugginess with this uh, in terms of how you place these heat pipes. It seems that the order in which you place them will kind of determine if they work or not. So to avoid as many issues as possible, I would suggest placing your heat pipes from your reactor to your destination in that order, okay? So don't, don't like place your, uh, your pipes from your heat exchange system to your reactor or like inner in in between, you know, do that and then connect to here and then connect to here or whatever. Um, for now, until things get fixed, if they do, um, I would say definitely place your heat pipes in the order from your reactor. So from here out to your heat exchanges and heat exchange in order, okay? 
that should hopefully avoid any of these issues that seem to bork some setups. Okay, so that's an important note there. Now this ratio works, right? Because we have 11 of these. Each one of these can support four. So technically, two reactors um, could support eight, three reactors could support 12. Now this is actually acting as four reactors, right? Two and two, four. Um, so this can actually support 16 of these, but I did this just to demonstrate the pump maximum here. Um, if you wanted to add on another pump and stuff, you could actually support 16 of these exchanges from the, just this setup. And then of course that would support more turbines based off of the uh, numbers I gave previously. And I will link these, or link, I will post these numbers in the description so you can, you know, copy them down or refer to them if you want. So that's pretty much how this works. So lastly, in terms of largest setups, we have this up here, okay? So we have this guy up here and this is where you can really get crazy bonuses, right? If we add this up, this is actually equivalent to 28 reactors, okay? There's only eight physical. So here's how we count this up. There's eight physical reactors here, right? Two by four. And then we have to add up all the bonuses. So this is a bonus of 200. And, and do keep in mind, guys, this is on top of itself, right? So this is not 200 reactors total. This is itself plus a 200% bonus. So we have eight. So let's take our base number of eight plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight. We're now up to 16, right? And now these guys in the middle get 300% bonus, right? Because they have three neighbors here, here, and here. Uh, so we were at 16, right? Eight and eight, three, six, nine, 12. 12 plus 16 is 28, okay? So this is equivalent to 28 reactors. Now, you may be able to support this off one pipe. I've not actually tested. Uh, I would say maybe you would want to do two just to be sure. But for the rest of these, like I said previously, these can just transfer heat to each other, right? I mean, it's pretty cool. These will just transfer heat through these heat pipes to each other. Uh, now, just for some numbers, this type of setup right here can support a pretty crazy amount of stuff. So if we take our calculator again and just do the quick math, we know that each one of these can support four. We have an equivalent of 28. So we have 28, each one can support four heat exchanges, times four, it's 112, okay? Now we know each heat exchange can support 1.72 turbines. So we multiply this number by 1.72. Okay, so this setup here can support 112 heat exchanges, which can support 192.6 turbines, okay? Now in terms of water, what we need to do is remember that each pump can support about 11 heat exchanges, right? So if we take 112 and divide by 11, we're actually gonna need about 10 pumps to support this, which is, you know, logistically it might be difficult, but that's about how much you're gonna need. And then each one of these turbines if you look here, these guys produce 5.8 megawatts. Each one of these turbines, 5.8, so you take your 192.6, and again, you could go up to 193. Uh, it may be a challenge to get that symmetrical. If, if you're like super picky about uh, symmetry, then I would just round down for that 192. Um, so we will round down because, you know, personally, I'm pretty crazy about symmetry. So let's just say 192 turbines at 5.8 megawatts a piece, that setup can generate 1.1 13. Well, what, let's just say 1.1 gigawatts of power, okay? This is going to be quite large, right? These get really, really big, guys. I mean, this part's small, but I mean, you already see how much this is. This is only 19. It's 10 times this size plus 10 times this size, okay? So it gets pretty crazy, but that's the type of things you can do here. And that is pretty much it. I think that's going to clear out this tutorial. I do hope that this gave you a better understanding of how nuclear uh, works and you know, there's so many different ways you can set stuff up. People are still coming up with all kind of crazy builds. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to power these on. But I mean, the process here is pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't even have the materials. But you can see this entire time I've been talking, this thing's been going, and we haven't even gotten a new one of these. So that 0.77 or 0 0.007 chance is uh, it's pretty painful. You're, you're going to want to start this as early as you can and get as much of it going as you possibly can. But I believe that's it, guys. I hope you found this helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback in the comments. 
If I mess anything up or forgot anything, please let me know and I will try to correct it uh, with a, with a pin, pinned comment or in the description or something. But uh, if you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, I believe that'll do it. Would love to hear your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.